Balance is not just a catchphrase. It is a movement, a movement towards positive behavior change in our young and old. How do we accomplish this? Through empowering and educating everyone to make that conscious decision to end the violence. But what is violence? According to the World Health Organization, violence is the intentional use of physical force or power, threatened or actual, against oneself, another person, or against a group or a community. This action either results in or has a high likelihood of resulting in injury, death, psychological harm, maldevelopment, or deprivation. We all have seen the devastating effects violence can have. We cannot continue to let physical violence, sexual violence, domestic violence, or any type of violence when rampant in our nation. Violence benefits no one. Not me, not you, not our families, our communities, and definitely not our beautiful island Barbados. So let's all work together. Join the movement and end the violence. For more information on the End the Violence campaign, visit us on Instagram and Facebook at End the Violence. End the Violence campaign, an initiative of the Division of Youth Affairs in the Ministry of Youth, Sports, and Community Empowerment. Hello. I am Peter Thorne, and welcome to this review of the five-part live panel discussion series on anti violence right here on CBT TV 8, brought to you with the compliments of the Ministry of Youth, Sports, and Community Empowerment, a partnership with the Caribbean Broadcasting Corporation, which you can also view on YouTube at the Division of Youth Affairs and on Facebook. This five-part live panel discussion series was an hour-long program each week which discuss a series of five short films, one every week, which were first premiered at the Olympus Theatres on November 8, 2022, as part of the Ministry of Youth, Sports and Community Empowerment's Anti Violence Initiative. The types of violence depicted in the short films were domestic, gender, psychological, sexual and physical violence. This week, we have an esteemed panel to review the entire series. On my right, and he's returning, the Director of Youth Affairs, Mr. Clavison Hunt. A pleasure having you, Mr. Hunt. Thank you, Peter, and good evening to our viewers. Thanks for returning. And next to him is another Hunt, but this time, Shaquani Hunt. She's the Executive Member of the Barbados Youth Development Council. Thank you for having me, Peter. A pleasure. We have back Joyan Innes, Educator, Advocate, and trade unionists. Thank you, Peter. And a first timer to the Anti Violence Initiative, Mr. Christopher Jones of You Report Barbados. Okay, thank you for having me, Peter. It's a pleasure to be here. A pleasure having you also. And we'll be back after the break. It is when I feel lost and directionless, placed under immense pressure to decide what my future will be and what my success will look like. These emotions are unique to me. Many of us suffer with these feelings. It is, however, important that we reach out, talk to someone. Make connections. Asking for help doesn't make you weak. It's one of the bravest and hardest things you'll ever have to do. We, we are, are not alone. alone. We are stronger than we think. This message is brought to you by the Youth Support Hotline, Ministry of Youth, Sports, and Community Empowerment. Call 539-HELP. That's 539-4357. Welcome back to the Andy Valence Live Panel Discussion Series Review Program. Well, we have Mr. Hunt who has been here, Shaquani and Jayan, the first timer, Mr. Jokes. Tell us how you got involved in the program. Well, good evening, everyone. Well, I'm part of the report, which is a social group that speaks and focuses on issues towards youth. And it is one of those, it's a social media platform that persons can get involved in, in terms of areas, for example, crime and violence. 
persons can speak on that where we would create polls on the different topics and take that information and then we would pre present it to the government. Wow. So tell us um, some, about some of your findings so far. Well, so far we've created a poll on end of violence. That is the poll that we're working on at this time. And our responders were 127 persons. And so far, 41% 40, 40 male, 59% female. And these are in the ages of 15 to 19%. Sorry, eight, ages 15 to 19. And the percentage of 71%, 20% is ages to 24. 4% 25 to 30. So this shows us the level or the demographic of persons who pays attention to such areas as crime and violence and who who weighs in on these different topics. Okay, we're going to get back to your findings. <laughs> um, but yeah. we are going to check um, our panel to see what they thought of the films and the types of violence in it. Uh, depicted. Mr. Hunt? Yeah. So the, the ministry would have invested um, in a range of programs to deal with the whole issue of violence. And these short films was one of the major um, initiatives which we would have embarked on because it provided it an opportunity for us to have Barbadians focus on themselves as they are mirrored within the various short films. Um, the five short films um, obviously dealt with different aspects of violence. And what we found coming out of the films really was the fact that violence was something that can be perpetrated not only in the homes, but in the communities, but in any aspect. We also found that coming out of the videos also to the issues of power and control, uh, which is one of the dominant themes that runs throughout the whole crime situation within the country. We also found also coming out um, of the, the films, um, you know, that males, the male perpetrators were um, dominant um, in, in those videos. But we also recognized that we were not stereotyping men because women are also involved in, the, um, in, in violence as well. And in particularly in relation to um, the, 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 the domestic, the area of domestic violence. We saw issues of patriarchy and male, 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 male dominance, um, male privilege um, coming through sharply in, in those videos. Um, we saw issues um, of violence, physical violence, right in your face violence, which is something that generally people tend to see. But we also know that violence in itself is also very in, insidious in, this, in the sense that there are a lot of violence that's actually perpetrated that we are not really aware of. And uh, what we wanted to do um, in the ministry also to, is to ensure that we have a situation where our young people, because we know young people are both the perpetrators as well as the victims of violence. And we also wanted to show also to that, that coming out of violence, that there is a pervasive um, series of negative situations, harm to individuals, harm to the society, um, and, and that is uh, some of the things that we wanted to, in those videos, to show that these are areas which we wanted to pay attention on. We want to have Barbadians to place focus on that so that they can reduce the level of violent thoughts within the whole society and that ultimately that we can reduce violence within the country. So that's my starting out. Okay, Shaquani, what was your take on it? Well, I've been on a couple shows here. And what I realized is that a lot of the videos, it showed case where violence was not only, the person wasn't only participating in the violence, but they also learned violence. So they would have came up in a household where they saw somebody attacking somebody or they saw a family member treating somebody in that way. And even though they know that it's not right, in their mind, that is the way. Uh, so when um, the director spoke about your mirror image, that is the image that you need to be careful about, what your children are seeing you doing. So if you know that you're behaving in a manner or you're speaking to your spouse in a negative way, you need to watch yourself because you do not want to um, pass down that trauma. You do not want to keep the cycle going. 
what I realized that these videos did do, it educated persons on what violence can look like, the different types of violence, because a lot of persons don't believe that these exist and it's all in our minds. But because they can now see persons who look like them, who sound like them, they can now identify that, you know what, maybe I am this person in the video, maybe this um, how persons speak to me when I'm at the beach is not appropriate, maybe I should say something. Maybe getting slapped at home, maybe that's not the right way. Maybe I should speak to somebody. So now that they know that this is not the right way, the right path, they also know who to contact, how they can get help. And I found that these videos made it very easy for a person to one, follow the narrative, get help after, and then they also talk to persons about the, the attacker because even the attacker needed help as well because sometimes they don't even understand that they're doing something wrong. They think that this is the right away, this is the passage that they must carry on because this is what they were taught. And I think that this was an excellent initiative. A lots of persons reached out to me to, telling me that they saw the program, they wanted to know when they're doing it again, where they can see the videos again. Even like communicating how persons can get help, you'll be surprised. Even though it is out there, a lot of people cannot find these things online. Even though everybody has a cell phone. When you actually need the help, sometimes you don't even have access to a phone. Like we had mentioned a couple of weeks back when sometimes when the abuser wants to take control of the situation, they take away your access to technology, so your phone, your laptop. So even though we would say it's accessible, it might not be accessible. So having a program running on Channel 8 TV, I think is an excellent initiative because if they at least have a TV, they can see the program and the person who's the attacker might not even realize what is going on and they can get help. Okay, the opening shot is different. Shapani Hunt, your thoughts, Cheyenne, in it? <laughs> All right, so yes, I do agree that it is an excellent initiative. Um, I remember there was a takeaway if you, in watching all of them, there were many takeaways, many. Um, what it also highlighted, as was stated, that sometimes you are not aware that you are actually a perpetrator of violence. Say, for instance, the sexual harassment scene. He thought this was cultural, and it is very cultural, especially in the Caribbean. However, not understanding the impact that it would have on the victim, he was unaware till he recognized it was his friend that went through something that was similar. For me, the, one of the videos spoke about the one um, snuffed out was stating that at the end, she was making some comments, one of the actress, and stated that this was in us. And I, I didn't necessarily agree. It was like, what, what does she mean that this is in us? And then I did some research, and there is in intergenerational trauma. So that's literally passed down from one generation into the, the next. The thing is that some science have sh also shown that it is encoded in the DNA. Now, if that is true, we have another thing that we need to look at that was not part of the factor because we assume that it was always learned behavior. But if you're saying that it can be based on what that trauma has been, if that is embedded in one's DNA, how then do we then modify it to some extent that your persons now learn new behavior, something that is against their own nature? So I, I am fascinated and I'm always also intrigued with this initiative. I think it's an excellent initiative. I think agreeing with you that it is shown through one, um, some mediums, but it's not necessarily reaching everybody else. What it can do is also be part of the discussion within teachers. So you can start at the primary level and have as part of your social studies class, you can show these different types of violence that may exist, and therefore depending on the age group, because it has to be age appropriate, and then when they recognize, have the discussion, and therefore start then with the modification of behaviors. Okay, Jayanna, your thoughts on this jokes? Well, from during the videos, actually, I see that it's phys a lot of physical violence has been is go, and going on within the videos and this can come right back down to using myself as an example within the disabled community yes. persons in the community are affected the same way the able-bodied community is also affected so the videos would help to 
not only educate persons but bring awareness to the society. And I think what happens is within our society, the, the support system is lacking in different areas. That may be one of the challenges that we, would, that we are having. Okay, we are going to take a short break and we'll be back in just a moment. The Ministry of Youth, Sports and Community Empowerment's Mentorship Program, Project Prodigy, is once again opening the call for suitable mentors and mentees. The program aims to provide youths with positive role models and support, create a safe space where youths can find encouragement and guidance, connect youths with individuals who can help when they are facing everyday challenges. Do you know a young person between 12 and 17 who could benefit from targeted guidance? Are you a responsible, caring and committed individual over the age of 21? Then Project Prodigy may be the right fit for you. Consider joining us and become a partner in the positive development of youth here in Barbados. If you or someone you know is interested in joining Project Protégé as a mentor or a mentee, please contact the ministry at 535-3835 or send an email to ydp at barbados.gov.bb. That's 535-3835 or email ydp at barbados.gov.bb. Welcome back to the Anti Violence Live Panel Discussion Series Review Program. I'm going to go to Mr. Jokes of your report, Barbados. You were about to give us the specifics on the findings of your poll. What stands out? When was this poll done? When, was it recent? Was it dated? What are the young people saying about the different types of violence? Um, well, so far, we've recently done this poll towards for the campaign specifically and our reach the physical is 40 percent it's physical violence and because like discrimination you would see 9.1 percent physical violence 36 percent but physical violence is the main issue that stands out among the young persons do, do people get the is it a perception or is it a reality that they are really Violence is really a serious problem in society. Well, we can see it on a day-to-day -day basis mm -hmm. in a lot of the different spaces we are in. Although it may not show as much for the young persons, but we are, as young persons, we pay attention to what happens around us. So far, you would have, for our, one of our questions, which, was, which said, do you think youth involvement in crime and violence is an urgent issue to address in Barbados. Mm -hmm. And the number for that was 87% who said yes. 7% mm -hmm. said no, not sure, 6%. How about those with, is social media having an impact? You had a question like that? Uh, so far for social media, these questions are all on social media as well. Uh -huh. So we would gather our data from that mm -hmm. through social media, WhatsApp, as persons can go on to social media and once they type a particular, what we would call a trigger word, which would be crime and violence, then the questions would populate and they can answer and we gather the information. But I'm asking the impact of social media. Like uh, it, how, is that neg negatively or positively impacting people? Well, social media, that is negative because cyberbullying is at large, but not pers many persons may speak, want to speak on it. Because you know, we know that as a young person, our peers, how they may judge us. And um, being behind the screen is easy to feel that you are in power. Exactly. You can control the situation, especially when you have a fake name. And you, are you not don't being have seen picture. Exactly. It gives in, you the power to form. police somebody else. And then you, you also have a situation in Barbados where if anything happens now, especially in the first thing goes on social media, it goes on social media. Is or, this impacting the, the youth or the, the wider population? Were you able to determine or ascertain that? Well, from our numbers here, we weren't able to get a definite on that. But me specifically, I can see it as, for example, let's use if someone was gunned down. The first thing that you may see pop populate in your WhatsApp is the video before it gets to the media. So it then can affect the individual's family because it goes around and we don't know how 
how that may affect them. So can I play oh, yeah, I, well, sure. I want to hear what the other okay. panelists think so about these So let me say the devil's advocate. Before, these things would have been occurring. However, it was not captured as swiftly on social media because we would have had violence in schools, etc. From the time you know, going to go in school, there was a lot of fighting. There was a lot of domestic violence within the community as well. But it was never captured via social media because that, that platform was not available. So my question is... Is it more prevalent now, or is just that we're seeing it now? No, we're now, well, social media is actually allowing us, allowing us to see it more. Because as you said, it was out there before. But with the WhatsApp, the Facebook, the Instagram, persons having their phone, taking videos of everything, and uploading it, that allows us to see it more than often, and it's even all over the world. Yeah. I would say yes and no. Mainly because I find a lot of persons in this generation, they have a lot of difficulty channeling their anger. They don't know how to control themselves. They don't know how to control their mouth or their behavior. So something, something that doesn't need to be escalated, they escalate it without even considering the consequences. <laughs> like I am in a course and one of my classmates mentioned that a student in his class said he's not afraid to go to jail. He was only a first one. Time he comes out, he can still be young, so he ready. So imagine they have issues. So rationalizing. So already. in his mind, they're trying to help the generation. This this new generation coming into school, a first farmer. This is his mentality already. What is he supposed to do with that? Well, How is he supposed to navigate come from, that? That may also come from this, the spaces that he might have been in. Exactly. And he's been in that and it's community not to persons who might have been in jail or something like that it is not only the the pair it's not only teachers the parents have to jump in and sometimes the parents are the problem but i think it starts from the parents yeah but if the parents are the problem some people who are the problem don't even know they're the problem so they don't know how to fix it but therefore that means that for our educators for mm -hmm. ministry of education ministry of youth mm -hmm. we have to look, then create safe space mm -hmm. spaces within the environment meaning even at work because if a person is experiencing domestic violence um, in, at home, um, they come into the workplace, it may manifest itself in different ways. And therefore, but is there a safe space? Am I, because you know Barbados, our culture is that whatever information is given to you in confidence goes through the adults. Mm -hmm. So people are not very trusting. So therefore, where is where those safe spaces that allow persons when they're going through this level of violence that they can go within the schools, within the work, within the health system? Where where are they going? Well, that's what our lead man on. on but the I've been able to ask. I, I, I just <laughs> want to go back a little bit. Just rewind a little bit to the um, the stats that Chris actually mm -hmm. uh, provided. But first of all, to thank the report um, for, you know, doing the work um, to provide us with some empirical data in relation to that. Right. And obviously, um, the work is not complete, so we are still waiting because 121 is still, you know, a small number um, when you look at the youth demographic. But um, the fact that the majority of people said that visual, you know, the, the whole thing with physical violence was not surprising to me, really, because... It is more visual, yes. yeah? And the other thing also too, and I think that's one of the reasons why we presented the different sides, the different facets of domestic, of, of violence mm -hmm. in our films, because people see the visual. But those other subtle ones, mm -hmm. like discrimination yeah. exactly. and, and so on, domestic violence, which is really a hidden kinds mm -hmm. of problem, mm -hmm. those are the ones that we don't pay much attention to, even though they are serious and severe. But people don't, necessarily focus their mind on that. So when you talk about cyberbullying, for example, this is something that's occurring outside of a space that is not where you are close to the person. So I think those are some of the reasons why you're going to get the, 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 that type of information. But what I think um, I wanted to say also too, in relation to the videos, is that the, 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 the instances of violence are so complex that even though we produce five discrete videos, that all of those things that we produce could be entwined in one yeah. event. Yeah. You know, so a, 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 a person, a family, or whatever, can be experiencing all five mm -hmm. at the same time. Right. And that shows the complexity of the problem and the challenge that we have in addressing um, domestic violence. But um, 
the other point I want to make also too in terms of the, the, the statistics is around the measurability. It's easier for us to count up and quantify mm -hmm. um, 10 murders, mm -hmm. you know, than 10 instances of discrimination, for example, or 10 instances of intimidation. And that is where the statistics are, are you know, it, are so uh, available, readily available, which is why you can see a lot of young people probably moving and trending towards uh, the whole point of physical violence as being the most um, dominant. Because that's what we see. My, my question is, how do people report it? Where do they report it to? Because sometimes persons say they call the police for assistance, tell them, okay, this is what's going on in the household. The police say, well, they have not hit you or anything like that. So maybe we need to update any laws to protect people in for things like this. Because if you want people to ask for help, but when they ask for help, there's not really a system to help them. How do we tackle that? I, so again, the devil's advocate. So persons calling for domestic violence. Mm -hmm. Police officer turns up. They therefore, you know, decided, okay, are you going to press charges? Yes. Then, right before mm -hmm. the person they have um, decides, you know what, we are going to take you in. Somebody decides, oh, no, oh, no, I changed my mind. No, that I, I, I don't really want him. I was just upset. He just, he apologized and it goes. And I'm sure that they're seeing mm -hmm. that on a recurring basis, which means that the individual that's going mm -hmm. through it, obviously is going through some other, another one, financial um, mm -hmm. manipulation, mm -hmm. abuse, and therefore feeling that if this, her, the, the, the spouse or mm -hmm. his spouse, because it's both ways, are in that situation, if they're gone, they will not, no longer have the assistance. But okay. I think what we need to add to that is definitely a counselor into the system because if a person reported this, something had to happen, even if it was nothing. So we need a person to follow up. Maybe a social worker could go and follow up to see if everything is going okay. Because if the police have done their part, nothing has happened, nothing came out of it, we need somebody to follow up just in case the person was feared into backing out. And that now I think will help put something in the system where people have something to fall back on just in case they change their mind. Okay, just so your thoughts, Shaquani. We'll be back with the Andy Valance, um Review Program in just a moment. The Youth Support Hotline is here to provide you with the assistance that you need. It is a safe space for those who feel as though they have nowhere to turn and need assistance that may not be readily available. Our trained staff are available to provide you with any support that you may need, any time of day or night. Our lines are open 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. This support takes the form of qualified psychiatrists and other key mental health and wellness bodies here in Barbados. You don't have to suffer in silence. Any challenge that you may be facing, big or small, we are here to support you. If you or someone you know needs support and are unsure about where to turn, call 539-HELP. That's 539-4357. This message is brought to you by the Youth Support Hotline, Ministry of Youth, Sports, and Community Empowerment. Call 539-HELP. That's 539-4357. Welcome back to the Andy Valence Live Panel Discussion Series. This is the review program. And remember, you can call us at 228-5562 or 228-5563. We'll be only too glad to welcome your calls. 228-5562 or 228-5563. Mr. Hunt. Yes, sir. A lot of work has gone on in this initiative. Yes, yes. What will be the next step? Right. Okay. Um, before we go to the next steps, though, and I think this is all part of the next steps, um, mm -hmm. there was something that was put on the table um, in our initial um, in our initial introductions, um, this goes to the heart of the whole challenge of how do you treat to this um, problem. Mm -hmm. And both Shaquani um, talked about treating um, crime and violence as learned behavior, mm -hmm. which we know it is. And Joanne in, uh, introduced something that was even more interesting when she talked about the concept of things being in person's DNA. Which means it is almost as though people are predisposed to committing crime. And I mean, this is a very interesting um, concept, which is something that I think that we, we have to discuss because it is only when we understand what 
are the root causes for persons involved in different aspects of the, the, the of, of the event. Because note, there are different types of violence, mm -hmm. and all have, in some instances, different root causes. Although there are a lot of commonalities in relation to all types of violence, right? And some of it has to go back to the thinking, what your thoughts are, which is where our program is geared to. How do we get people to unlearn um, behavior? How do we impact thinking to have people thinking positive thoughts rather than negative thoughts? So that when you act out behavior, that you're acting out behavior which is positive rather than behavior that is geared towards um, negative outcomes. All right, just hold your thoughts, Mr. Hunt. We have someone on the line, so we're going to take that call and then return to. Good, good afternoon. How can we help? Good afternoon, sir. Uh, Good afternoon. We are talking about the enemy violence. Yes, please. The, 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 people, the people ain't doing nothing about it, so they're going to find they're killing one another. And the best people that I will have is the defense force. They're doing the work. I prefer to hire them. So you say about that? <laughs> Very interesting call. Thank you, Diane. Very okay. interesting comments. Bye-bye. I think, I, and, I, and, I, and I'd like the, the concept, the, the call, because the call really goes to um, some of the stuff that I wanted to say to the, today, which may be a little bit controversial. Mm -hmm. Because one of the things that I, I, am, I, am, I am seeing, based on experience working with persons who have been involved in batterers and veterans intervention programs and things like that, is for us to look at whether we do not need to look to shift our thinkings in some way from that judicial approach in some instances towards a more rehabilitative, yeah, a yeah, more yeah, program yeah. which is based on intervention, psychoeducational interventions. Yeah. And I say this also too because one of the things, especially when we deal with domestic violence, for example, is that if we imprison someone having done the, the act, and there is no intervention provided while the person is in prison or whatever, then when the person comes out, they come out just as they were in. No, they're more angry. And they are more prone to commit the act again than if we do an intervention where we expose persons to the challenge, the causes why they have been, been, been involved in domestic violence in the first place. And as we said, it is a learned behavior in a lot of cases. I mean, we've seen the video um, where a person said, look, okay, I got this from my father. I saw them do this. Mm -hmm. And therefore, they continue to do it. Yes. If we do not provide that intervention, then the person will continue to behave. Because they, as we say in Barbados, they know the better. Mm -hmm. But what we have to do in relation to the in intervention is to cause them to reflect on their behavior and to see that there are alter alternative ways of being able to settle and resolve conflict. So that is just my um, intervention, um, ladies and gentlemen, which I know <laughs> may be a little bit controversial, but I am saying that based on all the experience that I have, that this is an approach I think that we should also consider, rather than taking strictly about lock up and trade the key. Yes. I, I do agree that I don't think that it should just be locked up and throw away the key because I think it does, honestly that's a waste of government resources. We could better utilize our resources if we put them in a facility where they could be rehabilitated because now we got the old Glendary building. It is not being occupied right now. If we have persons with less serious offenses, we can possibly renovate that facility and put programs in there, make it an outpatient system where persons could come on the morning, leave on the evening, whatever is the best technique to do it, but also have persons who can counsel, persons who can train, videos like these so persons can come in and watch these seminars and they can actually see, okay, maybe this is me because some persons, as we said before, don't even recognize that they're the problem. They think that everybody else is the problem and only them doing the right thing. So we need to not only not lock them up, but we also have to have a facility to facilitate this rehabilitation because if we can just say we're going to go into the home, sometimes the households does not have the room for that. We have households that maybe have 10 people in it, three rooms, where you're going to do the private session with them. You're going to do a group session. So yes, that is a brilliant idea, but we need to help, help the government. I think I like... I, I think I like 
the way that Chris has approached this, because I'm very data driven. Mm -hmm. So therefore, I really want to see where, where it is, where, how much it is. Um, he's doing it with his interest group. Mm -hmm. I want to know exactly, and he stated that they're seeing more, for them is more physical violence. Mm -hmm. But as Cleveston would have stated, it's because the other ones are not measurable. We can't, the, that, that data is not necessarily coming in. Mm -hmm. The thing... So but, the physical physical but but here's yes. the other part <laughs> the assumption even when i saw the videos that's why i had asked the question was it intentionally done in a particular area especially snuffed out mm -hmm. the assumption is like what um the caller would have stated would have give the the idea that you know you have punitive measures in place in order to address all of this level of deviance and the assumption is within that is on one social status one one economic uh, social economic background mm -hmm. yes. that's not true it is going across but you yes. are not privy to the ones that may be in a different bracket yes. but it, it must be existing up there as well so that's why i'm looking now to see are we getting a true reflection of what is going on within the society what mm -hmm. do we need to do to get all of that data mm -hmm and then determine where or how best that we are going to manage this. Yeah. Well, Do you believe, given what Mr. Hunt had posited about locking up and throwing away the key <laughs> and that there are no interventionist programs um, after the person is um, incarcerated, etc. Don't you believe that perhaps, um, obviously there should be collaboration between the Ministry of Youth, Ministry of Education, etc. But that we should perhaps look to be proactive and take this issue into the schools from at the primary level. I agree. Have to. I do agree. We yeah. have to because if we don't, we're going to have a generation of children who don't want to listen to nothing you say. But they can't listen to nothing you say because they can't even find the time to quiet down. But to that's listen. not their era. We were the being coming through it. If you speak to your parents in a certain manner about slap, I mean, I, I watch this, and that would be now deemed as violence. Yeah. That would be now. So you were had That's to be re true. respectful. You could you would walk mm -hmm. the world. You said something in, inappropriate to an elderly person. That mm -hmm. person will hold you and whoop you. Well, that that is not the, so it's therefore, we need to also understand the language itself. What are we deeming as violence? I need that very clear. What are we dealing? What do we deem as discipline? I need that very clear. And where is the line? Because if you're saying yes to cut up a child's skin, and uh, yes, no. that is brutal. But if you're saying to me that I give you a couple slaps, you know, to let you know this is inappropriate behavior after warning, um, is that inappropriate? So I, I think, think we need to do a wider sensitization with the public, maybe a yes. consultation forum where persons can ask questions like this. Because if you are educated in this field and you are trying to decide where the lane is, Think about the regular persons who are who does not have the experience, who does not have the education background in the field. How do they decide what is violence and what is acceptable? But teachers are not necessarily adequately trained in the area of this particular area of psychology and social work. That mm -hmm. is not necessarily where are what we are employed to do. So therefore, do we need additional social workers in place? Definitely. And if we do that, what is the cost? Is there a cost? Is there an economic factor that is saving a generation? Even to deal with violence. Yeah. Is there I'm an economic factor? Okay, yeah. that's all hold your thoughts on. We are going to take a short break and we'll be back in just a moment. Barbados, are you ready to celebrate the outstanding youth in our nation? It's time to honor those who make a real difference, those who are shaping our future. Get ready for the National Youth Awards. Save the date for the National Youth Awards, May 26, 2024, at the Frank Collimore Hall. But here's the best part. Nominations are now open. You can nominate those outstanding individuals who deserve to be recognized for their contributions. So how to nominate, you ask? Simply visit us at our Facebook page at Division of Youth Affairs and click on the link provided under the post section to access the nomination form. Alternatively, you can go to our Instagram page at DivYouth246 and click on the link provided in the bio. Once you have accessed the form, fill it out in its entirety and press Submit. If you prefer a physical form, then select your preferred location from the list provided. 
You can find collection points listed on our social media pages. The nomination deadline is May 13, 2024. So spread the word to everyone you know, your friends, family, neighbors, and workmates. Let's make this year's National Youth Awards the biggest and brightest celebration ever. Nominate now to be a part of celebrating excellence in our youth. Welcome back to this End the Violence Live Panel Discussion Series Review Program. And remember, you can call us at 228-5562 or 228-5563. We'll be only too happy to welcome your calls. Before the break, Mr. Hunt, you were about to make a point. Oh, yeah. Um, and I just want to say that I, I hope, I, I seem to open a little can of worms on the panel, and I am happy that I did because I want us and I want all of us um, to be focused in terms of um, interventions. And I wanted to say that what I was saying would be I'm, I'm, I'm promoting early intervention. Mm -hmm. I don't want, we don't want people to get to the stage where they're shooting people so that yeah. you have to call in the defense force and things like that mm -hmm. to, you know, yeah. um, even though that may be an inappropriate way for us to deal with the issue. But, and I, I must also say too, um, that what I was exposing is not something that I have not seen happen. Mm -hmm. So I know it's possible for us to look at different ways in which we treat to crime and crime mm -hmm. prevention to ensure that people are not getting caught back in the cycle. Because if you look at what happens in prisons, for example, if you do any surveys in there, you will realize that there's a high rate of recidivism. Mm -hmm. People go into prison, they come out, they go back, they come out, they go back in, because there is, there is in a lot of cases, no change that has gone on that will move that person from the conditions, mm -hmm. the social conditions in which they are existing. And that is what I'm saying that as part of that overall intervention, as, mm -hmm. as, as Shaquani was saying, that we got social work, we got counseling in there, mm -hmm. so that people can really understand the conditions in which people are existing, and which drive them towards mm -hmm. crime. I mean, I mean, if you want talk theory, you can, you can talk about you know, differential association and all that. Mm -hmm. We have people who live in the same similar conditions if you yeah, live in a situation where you see crime around you all the time, yeah. you're prone to commit crimes. One person come up fine, next person come up being a criminal. Exactly. But what I can say, maybe we need to look at different countries and see how they tackle the issues in their prisons. Because I know Switzerland, they have a very interesting system in one of their prisons where they basically rehabilitate you in prison. So you're in a whole setting, but in a prison. You can't leave, yeah. but they retrain you. You do rehabilitation so that when you go back out into society, you know how to behave, you know how to act, yeah. and you are in a position where you can help yourself and help others. So it's not only just being in a cell, but they help you navigate being a person or existing outside the walls of a prison. Yeah. So maybe we need to reconstruct how we operate inside the prison so that when they come back out, we can reduce repeat yeah. offenders. Yeah. Well, not only Switzerland, there are many progressive countries in the world where Actually, as a prisoner, you can come home and you can work on weekends. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can, and then you can also go home on weekends and then you return to prison during the week. Yeah. So when you come out, you are a reformed person. You are exactly. not the same person that went in. Right. But if we are going to take this Eurocentric approach or this Western approach and we, we run we with cannot. it, we're I believe we are, we are imprisoning yeah. ourselves. Basically, we are creating a bigger problem by keeping them as the problem. Yeah, correct. But uh, is, is it beneficial to do it this way as opposed to your other way? Yeah, but what, what I'm saying, Peter, is that um, and, and what we are doing um, in the programs within the ministry mm -hmm. is that we are trying to ensure that people don't get to that stage where they go, have to go to prison. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about early investments mm -hmm. um, into the lives of young people. And we are talking about having sustained programs, bringing young people who are on the blocks. I mean, we have um, our block intervention programs, for example, where we work with young people who are on the blocks and trying to move them away from areas, as, we, as I talk about, it's one differential association. If you're we also have with your construction gateway program, which is really yes. excellent. Yes. But I find some of your programs need more push, more awareness, because right. I, I found out about it from inside of my salon. And I was able to share that information to so much other people. People yeah. don't know that there are free programs where people could go and get yes. trained in construction. Yeah. So imagine you don't have to pay any money, but you could go and learn and come back up with a skill and then possibly get a job. Yeah. And opportunities like that, we need to push more because 
that may be the difference between somebody going to rob a person or not. Yeah. I think, but ministry, you've had, they have a lot yeah. of programs, yeah. initiatives no, running, the and they're... are not getting to some of the people. I, I'm no, not no, sure. No. You, I, I, you I, have, Mr. Hunt, we have one now going with the yeah. hotline. Yeah, the, youth, the National Youth Hotline. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, we have a mentorship program. The National uh, Mentorship Program yeah, is I one that, that we do. Um, again, and a number of the programs that we do within the, 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 the ministry are really pro-social programs mm -hmm. that drive young people away from mm -hmm. um, being involved in crime and, 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 and violence. Mm -hmm. So we want to move young people away from those situations where they, they are at risk or where the risk factors are greater than those pro-social factors that will mm -hmm. push them over the, on the other side. So those are the, the types of programming that we, we have. Uh, we have a, a national sports training program, for example, where all over the island young people can um, engage in a number of sporting disciplines um, mm -hmm. with, in which um, they can, can hone their skills. Um, we have uh, a, our national summer camp program where we treat exactly. the young people between mm -hmm. eight, age 4 to 15. And again, that is a continuous investment in social development mm -hmm. programs and programming within those summer camps that will assist our young people um, at that early stage. As I said, those early investments, because you want yeah. when children reach age 15 and 16, which is the most problematic mm -hmm. stage of their development, that they have those kinds of inputs that mm -hmm. strengthens them um, to be able to make good, yeah. solid decisions mm -hmm. for themselves and for their future. Definitely. I can say that these programs are definitely helping a lot of young people, but the problem is sometimes is that after the programs, they don't have anywhere to go. I think that we need to get behind that um, BDF program, that sports program they had. That was excellent yeah. for dealing with the persons who are over 16 to about 25, I think, or 30, where if you're good at sports and you're just home, you could go into the BDF and then that transition to persons actually joining the BDF after because they're now become accustomed to this type of training. And they believe that, no, this is something for them. This is their future. This is how they got out of the problem. So programs like that, I think we may need to relook at them to start them back because they saved a lot of people. I know people who were in them who were saved. I, I want to ask Mr. Hunt again quickly. Um, I, Chris, you can come into when you're ready, but the Ministry of Youth, Sports, and Community Empowerment, they have a digital program now in prisons. Yes. And um, reaching out, and we also have a project project to expand and... Um, yeah, um, mm -hmm. right. The, the, I think what we are, we're trying to do um, also um, in relation um, to the prisons is the same concept that we talked about. Mm -hmm. How do we help persons to transition from prison into the communities? Mm -hmm. And one of the things that we, we said that within the prison, for example, there are people who have a lot of skills. Mm -hmm. They are That's very right. good carpenters, masons, mechanics, and stuff like that. But some people struggle when they come out of prison to find work. Yeah, because nobody, can, nobody wants to hurry you. Nobody wants to hurry the, then, right? The uh, police certificate too. Right. And one of the things that we said that we also would do is to go in before youth entrepreneurship scheme, for example. Mm -hmm. Teach them the skills of management. Teach them to be entrepreneurs so that when they come out, they can own their own businesses. So that rather than having to go to Peter to ask Peter for um, a chance. A chance they come out, they set up their own business, and they use the skills to be able to sell their services mm -hmm. to um, the public. But the, the, the society, though, is not a forgiving society yeah, because no, no, once no. the person has been incarcerated, we it seem to have a blanket approach that we right just um, that. Don't, don't forgive them. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad you mentioned that about the um, regarding to prison because with our statistics, we would have received feedback on solutions, some of the solutions as well. Mm -hmm. So some who have been like, speak to um, speakers who have been to prison, mm -hmm. like what you said, persons now who go into entrepreneurship, uh, they can become, some of the prisoners can become speakers to our youth within mm -hmm. our community centers, have a community oriented program, yeah. you know, to guide them in the right path and let yeah. them know the life from prison mm -hmm. and after, mm -hmm. so that it would show them it's not easy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So why not before they even hit prison, mm -hmm. before they hit prison? Can't we have those programs running within the school itself? Because when a child, when children come into, their, I know that we're doing education reform mm -hmm. and we're looking at where the, where children now are, may not be academic, but they may have uh, aptitude or towards a, a specific a area, particular skill. Therefore, my thing, I think it should be probably mandatory that every child before they leave 
secondary school and secondary school I the age group you you can children develop at different stages and you will find that a child will probably leave at 16 years old or not seem to be um, coping at 16 years old and then that same young adult at 18 19 years old seem to blossom all of a sudden because they develop different stations so maybe we need to also increase the age of leaving school mm -hmm. and whilst you're in school have the programs running the apprenticeship programs running within the school place children within particular students within particular areas if you find out that they're having a certain attitude towards not wanting to be part or they're influenced by their peers, that's where your counseling would come in at a, a, a more deep dive kind of level to find out why they are not in any way situated in, within a program itself. So I think it can start before school, before mm -hmm. um, they hit prison. And therefore, we, but then again, as I'm saying, there's always an economic cost to all of this. And therefore, we need to have that discussion as well. What does this mean when we look to implement certain programs? But they yeah. do have okay. some programs because I know that you can do CBQs, which are skill-based qualifications. So even yeah. if you don't want to do an academic qualification, this is a qualification that is continuous assessment. So even when Agreed. you leave school, you can continuously be, be assessed in the area. Can I use so, it when I go? and therefore I want to go for a job. Yes, because it is a Caribbean regional qualification. It is recognized not only at secondary school. What I can say is that we do have to do some regularization of it in terms of going to BCC, but they are working on it because I do have a CVQ qualification in cosmetology and I got it, let me see, in 2014 or so. And by going through that program, I was able to compete in world skills. So it gives young persons opportunities not only to compete here in Barbados, but also regionally. We have that program. I remember I spoke at Granny Adams, and they have a program where persons do internships. So mm -hmm. the students identify what skill area they want to go into, and they reach out to a company or business, and they ask them if they could come in and do like a day release. So they could come in and see what the job is like and see if this is the pathway for them. So maybe more schools need to implement situations or scenarios like this to help students identify, well, this is the area I want to be because I went and they saw how they do it, and this is how I want to go forward in choosing my subjects. Yeah, so let me just jump in also, mm -hmm. um, because... To, to, to sort of pick up on what you're saying, Shaquani, and, and also Jayan, um, within the ministry, we offer what we call a next step training initiative. Mm -hmm. And that we deal with it, providing second chance opportunities for people who would, quote unquote, as you say, fall through the cracks. But those persons who would not perhaps done uh, well at school for whatever reason, because you know, uh, sometimes people get challenges that cause them to yes. not perform as Correct. well as we hope. And we have the Next Step Training Initiative, which uh, we send work with the Community College, Sam Jack Prescott Institute, okay. um, the, the t t t t vet, um, mm -hmm. to provide a number of training opportunities for these young people. In addition, we also have um, our Pathways Program, which is a mentorship and job placement program. And the young people come into this program as well, and we provide the training opportunities for them, and then we place them in various places of employment. I mean, our rate for placements is in, in the high 80s, That's all right? Great. So we have been very successful in, in terms of working with partners within uh, the hospitality industry and so on to be able to provide these young people with opportunities. Mm -hmm. Young people who would normally not get their foot into the door. Mm -hmm. And that's what we provide for them. And of course, it is for them to then hold on to the opportunity that's provided once the opportunity um, continues. So as you were saying, Shikwani, there mm -hmm. are a number of programs that we have in the ministry and they are all oversubscribed. Okay, okay. So we yeah, attempt, I, we honestly, attempt. I see, as soon as it goes, all I see is full. We attempt um, not only those, but mm -hmm. we look also towards the social development um, parts of that because we look at all aspects of the young person mm -hmm. and we subscribe to you know, what we call our youth development index mm -hmm. where we look and try to measure, but well, not try to, and measure the progress that we are making, our young people are making here within the country. Mm -hmm. And you raise the question about what happens after. And we also do our tracer studies. So once having mm -hmm. completed the, the, the course, right. because it's important that we know that the training is actually making sense and that people are actually benefiting. Mm -hmm. And therefore, after two years, we try to track all of our, these young people to see exactly whether 
they have made progress in the area in which they have, have been trained, or whether they have gone on to other areas of work. Mm -hmm. So, like I said, the, the program that we offer in the ministry is very varied, mm -hmm. is very dynamic, is very exciting. Mm -hmm. uh, Peter talked about the digital media for those persons who want to do, um, you know, those uh, courses that are more, you know, 20, is it 21st or 22nd century, you know, <laughs> whatever. But the more person, young people enter uh -huh. the digital the era, maybe we're talking about AI and all of uh -huh. that, no robotics and all of those. So we are on, on, on the, the, the cutting edge of, of implementing those types of courses to do that. And I mean, I'm looking at Chris and I say, we also did a course for persons with disability in digital media as well, because we found that that was an area that fit well for them. And but one of the, the areas, and uh, we did a course where uh, persons who were deaf mm -hmm. uh, were able to produce videos. Yes, I remember that. Right, public service videos for deaf, per deaf persons, mm -hmm. right? Clifford, can I ask you a question then? The so students or persons that would be engaged in some level of deviance within the society, do, do you have access to that group? Are they recommended then to Ministry of Youth so that then they will be able to um, own a skill? Yeah. yeah, we do have access to things. We work closely with the probation department, so persons okay. who may oh, okay. be in the criminal justice system mm -hmm. are able to access um, the courses that we have. Um, people who are at risk, I mean, you right. don't, I, we don't want you to wait until someone is in the criminal justice system. Okay, yeah. I remember um, we work also too with a, with, with, with a transition unit, um, mm -hmm. having a transition program, so that those kids who are in secondary school who were, di who were displaying some types of uh, behaviors that may lead to Mm -hmm. deviance, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that we could work with those earlies and place them in various programs in which we are doing within the ministry. Okay. So, I mean, the platform is there for um, um, all of our young people because what we also say is that, that, that I mean, we not only look at those that are at risk mm -hmm. because the, the vast majority of our young people are people who are not at risk. Mm -hmm. But through our mainstreaming program, we mm -hmm. want to give them opportunities too. Okay. And we don't want all of our resources to be spent on only on those persons. That's, yeah, yeah. That percentage that's that are at risk. I just want your thoughts, Mr. Hunt. I believe we have a call on the line. Yes, good evening. Good, good evening. evening. Um, they, 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 they don't, don't mind their disgusting. If you see them on um, school days or the morning when they go to the school time, and the city talk about, give me here how ridiculous it is. And the big people cannot speak to them. They give them words, oh, Lord, you have to shut them up. You can't even take a pen and to cool that head in. Cause it's something how them just carry on. But they don't want, I won't send them to the, uh, the big dogs. I will get a, like, the, a whole, a big place like, for built for them or they have it already. And the, if they get a three months, four months, I uh, think I let us live in there to the, uh, to learn them the same thing that Mr. Cleveland is there talking. <coughs> but going to this little thing and going back home, I'm ready to go where they're going again, go back where they was. They, they continue with the same thing. They have to stay for every something. So I'm pleased for them to stay there and pick a thing, take a thing, take a thing. Not taking it now and then go and then do the same thing all over again. I will send it to the big jail. I will get a place like, I will send them up by the, the, the French force and let them train them at their, at their three or four months. Okay. Thank, thank you very much. We appreciate your call. Um, before we wrap up, Director Hunt, I want to ask you, what is the next step in this whole end violence initiative? Okay, um, the next step really, um, we want to continue our discussions. Um, yes. Obviously, mm -hmm. we want to take these discussions into our communities and into our schools. Mm -hmm. We have a, 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 a number of learning products and we have a distinguished panel who we want to invite <laughs> to come with us as we go into our communities to have these discussions because, um, as, right. as we said, we want to have Barbadians discuss the whole issue of violence, but not only from the point of view of the fact that it's happening, but also as to what we can do. And for us all, you know, as, as a whole society um, kind of approach, this is my wrap up, I have to say, to assure that <laughs> at the end of it, that we are in a situation where our young people, our young people who are, as we said, the victims and mm -hmm. the perpetrators of, 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 of crime in, in the country, that they are in a situation where we all can say that we want to end the violence. Now, and just finally, um, 
based on what the young lady, the lady was saying. I just want to address what the lady was calling because I think it's important. Yes. One of the challenges that we have in practice is, as she's saying, you take the person out of the situation, you fix them, and then you put them back in the same dysfunctional um, but she said not to put them back in. Okay. She said, right. leave them, let it basically right. pay, and we retransition them into maybe a year later. Okay, okay. your final thoughts, Anshakwan? My final thoughts, I would say, is that I am looking forward to continue to work with the Ministry of Youth in helping them end the violence. Your final thoughts, Jayan Han? Yes. Jayan uh, Innes. I, yes. <laughs> For me, I really would like to see um, that all the different areas, all the different stakeholders collect the data collate that data so then we could see exactly where it is that we need to place our resources. Your final thoughts, Mr. Christopher Jokes of your report, Barbados. Well, for me, I believe in collaboration. Mm -hmm. And at a level where all agencies come together and working on a productive strategy that can work for the parents and the youth as well. Thank you very much. This week, you were view viewing the final review program of a live five-part panel discussion series on anti violence here on CBC TV 8, brought to you with the compliments of the Ministry of Youth, Sports and Community Empowerment in partnership with CBC. And I'd like to thank our esteemed panel, and I'd like to thank you for joining us over the several past weeks. I'd also like to thank our producer, Wanda Reed Beckles. Today, she, that, she was replaced by Ramat John-Pierre. I'd like to thank our director, Don Greenwich, our Floor and song crew, Ever Everson Brown, Royal Ford, Peter Bino, Michael Sobers, Philip Hines, our makeup artist, Joanne Jones. It has been a humbling but thoroughly enjoyable experience. Thank you very much. I look forward to seeing you in the near future.